Nobody wants those. Nobody wants these electric vehicles unless you're an elite that can afford them. People in my district sure as hell don't want them. So keep going. Why are we doing this? Is it over CO2? Yeah, we're doing it for three reasons. Even though the EV revolution is going to happen anyway. Oh, I think it's that's a revolution like, caused I, by I would love to be able to answer your question, Congressman. Yeah, okay. Even though we think that transition is happening in the automotive sector no matter what, there are three things that we think are not guaranteed. Will it happen quickly enough to materially help with climate change? Will it happen on equitable terms that are available to people who aren't wealthy and okay, might not I'm be able to? short on time. So if I could just please finish my answer. Let's drill on the climate change. Just finish the third. Really, uh, Will it be made on, on American soil or not? It's about CO2, isn't it? How's what that? Percent, what percent of the atmosphere is CO2 that we're chasing here? I'm sorry? What percent of the atmosphere is CO2 that we're chasing here? Because you're talking about climate change. I, I don't know the percentage of atmospheric gases. You don't know the percent of the atmosphere. What I can tell you is that climate change is real. We got to do something about it. Yeah, this one's and called autumn, been... sir. So I'm sorry, this one's called autumn right now. So yeah, uh, I'm sorry, I couldn't make out what you said, sir. This climate change right now is called autumn. Yes. Yeah, that's that's the seasons changing, which mm -hmm. respectively is not the same thing as the climate changing. Yeah, uh, for those who don't know, it is now the year 2023, and still, still Republican politicians like Representative Doug LaMalfa are pretending that climate change doesn't exist. Like, I'm sorry, but just this year, Phoenix reached 110 degree temperatures for 30 days in a row, Maui's drought set the stage for a devastating wildfire, and Southern California experienced a tropical storm for the first time in nearly a century, which is to say nothing of the sheer devastation wrought by other once-in-a-century storms that miraculously managed to hit the U.S. multiple times every single year. But sure, that must all just be autumn. I'm sorry, but give me a fucking break. And if this tired, desperate climate denialism looks familiar, that's because Republicans have been pulling these same tired stunts for years. Here's Republican Senator Jim Inhofe, almost a decade ago, making the same inane suggestion. Of uh, national attention, and in, in, in case we have forgotten, because we keep hearing that 2014 has been the warmest year on record, I asked the chair, you know what this is? It's a snowball, and that's just from outside here. So it's very, very cold out, very unseasonal. So here, Mr. President, catch this. Mm -hmm. Sure, these last eight years have all been the hottest years on record, but guys, there's a snowball, so who can really say? And clearly, things haven't gotten any better. Here's Republican Senator Ron Johnson only days ago. These people are telling Sub-Saharan Africa, you have to stay in the dark to and, and not develop your fossil fuels because we say so. This is keeping a billion people in the dark, Senator, because they say so. And it's called, it, it's essentially Dana. climate colonialism. It's racist. Dagan, there are 1,600 scientists from around the world that just joined in a declaration with, led by two Nobel laureates that said we are, we are not in a climate emergency, that all this climate change alarmism is based on bad science, completely ignoring the impact of clouds to basically be a heat sink. Uh, again, I, the climate has always changed, always will. I'm not alarmist, I'm not in denial, but we've spent over $5 trillion globally on climate change. We haven't moved the needle according to the climate alarmists. I mean, how much more are we going to waste? These windmills, according to an earlier report mm -hmm. on your network, are killing the whales. Yeah. Again, this, this whole climate change agenda is driven toward control over our lives. It's economically destructive. It's why we are experiencing inflation and high energy prices. But that's all this president is focused on. See, guys, you might think there are record temperatures just because our thermometers might say so, but let's not forget about the clouds. And that's to say nothing of the fact that windmills, which are positioned in the sky, are killing the whales, which are located in the oceans. Make sense? No? Well, maybe you should do your own research. And let's be clear, the reason for this bad faith bullshit is obvious. Republicans are pretending that climate change isn't real because they are getting paid to. These people aren't dumb. They're liars, sure, but they're not dumb. They can see the impacts of climate change. They can see the record heat. They can see the record wildfires. They can see the record hurricanes. They can see the record droughts. But Republicans have received over $310 million from oil and gas companies who stand to benefit from entrenching the status quo. When we switch from oil and gas to renewables and clean energy, 
Who do you think that impacts? The Exxons and BPs of the world. But those companies know that all it takes for some bad faith climate denialism is a few thousand dollars to some spineless Republican politicians and Democratic politicians in fairness, although not even close to the sheer quantity of those on the right. And then those people will come out and pretend that a once in a century storm is just called autumn. Take Doug LaMalfa himself, the guy who suggested to Pete that climate change is nothing more than the changing of the seasons. He took about $9,000 from oil and gas companies this cycle. It cost just $9,000 for him to peddle this pathetic, shameless, embarrassing bullshit to the entire world. $9,000 to sell out the planet that his kids and grandkids will inherit. $9,000 to play make-believe because that is how bought and sold this guy and his party are. Doug LaMalfa sold every ounce of his integrity for the price of a used Honda Civic. But in spite of the GOP's tired theatrics, just know that the Democrats are barreling forward with an agenda that actually confronts the impacts of climate change. Just today, Biden announced a new climate corps that'll train more than 20,000 young people in skills crucial to combating climate change, including the installation of solar panels, restoring coastal wetlands, and retrofitting homes to be more energy efficient and all participants in the program will be paid. According to the White House, the administration will specifically be focused on making sure that folks that are coming through this program have a pathway into good paying union jobs. We are very keenly focused on that. And this is hardly the White House's only move on climate. The White House also championed and signed into law the Inflation Reduction Act, which included the biggest climate investment in history. That legislation alone has created more than 170,000 clean energy jobs, while projected to create more than 1.5 million additional jobs over the next decade. Private sector companies have announced over $110 billion in clean energy manufacturing investments in just the last year alone, and $240 billion since Biden was elected. This law will reduce greenhouse gas emissions by approximately one billion tons in 2030, keeping us on track to cut emissions by over 50% below 2005 levels by 2030, and on track to reach net zero emissions no later than 2050. According to the Department of Energy, U.S. electricity generation from wind is expected to triple, and solar generation is expected to increase as much as eightfold by 2030. The Inflation Reduction Act also includes over a billion dollars in funding to help protect vulnerable communities from drought, heat, and extreme weather, and will help regular American families save between $27 and $38 billion on their electricity bills. And of course, the U.S. is now building a nationwide EV charging network, all the while EV sales have tripled during Biden's presidency. So I really don't know how to sugarcoat this, and frankly, I really don't give a shit if I sound alarmist, but vast swaths of this planet will and already are becoming inhabitable because of the impact of climate change. Young people know this, scientists know this, and everyone else willing to acknowledge objective reality knows this. The GOP and the media can both size this thing into oblivion, but the debate is over. This administration and today's Democratic Party understand that, and they are working to fix it. The danger in allowing Republicans to take power cannot be overstated. We have an ever-shrinking window where we can save this planet. We're taking the most aggressive action that's ever been taken, but that will end the second Republicans have the ability to do so. And then the government will be run by assholes like Doug LaMalfa, who will equate the fall equinox with record temperatures for eight straight years across the globe. If you're a Republican voter, think about that. If you're a non-voter, think about that. If you have kids and want to make their lives easy and enjoyable, think about that. This issue should transcend politics. It is existential for us as humans who share this planet. But the fact that Republican politicians will gladly politicize it for just a few thousand bucks from oil and gas companies should be all the proof you need that their priority isn't us, it is their jobs and their own grip on power. Before you go, I need some help. Please subscribe to the channel and do your part to help grow the progressive media ecosystem. I don't do sponsorships or paid ads, I won't ask for money, but just subscribing to this channel goes a really long way and it helps get the message out to more people. The subscribe button is right here on the screen. You can also subscribe to my Spanish language channel, which I made to reach those crucial Spanish speaking voters. That link is on the screen too. And finally, if you want to listen to my audio podcast, you can follow that link as well. Thanks so much for watching.